This is the Mac Studio, this is the studio display, and here's my 2022 sit-stand setup. So here's my new desk setup inspired by the Mac Studio and Studio Display. I wanted to mix things up a little and try something different for this one. So I went with a standing desk this time and I've tried standing desks before, but I've never had one that's motorized that gives you the option to either sit or stand. This specific one is from Office Depot. And honestly, the only reason I got it from there is because it was in stock and ready for pickup. There was another option at Target for a little over a hundred bucks but that one has a physical crank that you have to turn when you want to move the desk up or down. And even though that's a great way to save some money, for not much more, this one has an actual motor. The setup here is pretty simple, just one cable for power, plug it in, and two buttons to move the desk up and down. I was actually really surprised in every single aspect with this desk, with how smooth it is as it's moving up and down, how sturdy it is with everything that's on the desk, it doesn't shake or wobble. And I also really just love the overall clean and minimal look. It's not a huge desk, but it has just enough space for everything I need. And the pullout drawer is nice too. Inside of my desk drawer here, I'm keeping it pretty simple. I have a notepad and pen and an iPad. So we got like the classic and modern way to take notes and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, keeping it clean in there for now is also a great way to hide my keyboard and trackpad when I need to, but nice and simple. Now let's talk about the cable management that's going on here. I just gotta say, I am not a cable management wizard, but I'm also not super OCD with cables. Like if there's one or two popping out, it doesn't really bother me that much. But the tricky thing with standing desks, and this one especially, is that the cables are moving up and down. So there's one main cable that provides power to the desk and you can't lock this in place because it'll just be a disaster when you're moving it up and down. So a tip that I found was to attach these little 3M hooks that acts as a little anchor guide to keep the cables in place as it's moving up and down. Now the more challenging part of this was the speakers and studio display. Try to imagine power from each of these running straight to the wall or to a power strip on the ground. Trying to manage that amount of cables while the desk is moving would be like herding cats. Don't let anybody tell you it's easy. Luckily, there's a little indentation towards the underside back of the desk that fits a little power strip perfectly. So running the speakers and studio display into here allows everything to move in unison. So after that, the only cables I had to worry about on the right side of the desk is that cable that runs to the power strip and the Mac studio cable. And I did a similar thing here with those 3M hooks, which keeps everything looking very clean and tidy. <laughs> Another benefit to this speaker audio interface setup is being able to airplay music to it with the Mac Studio. So this always acts as a music listening hub that's ready to go. But an added benefit to this setup is also being able to airplay video to it. And I especially love to do my fitness plus workouts here. The studio display is a perfect size for that where you know, it's not as big as a TV, but it's also bigger than an iPad and a phone. So I really love to have the desk in standing mode and just play a workout. What's up? Welcome we to the Fitness Plus Studio in Los Angeles. I'm so beyond the desk, there's really four main elements here. The Mac Studio, the studio display, the interface, and the speakers. Now I think the compelling thing with the Mac Studio, especially if you're someone who doesn't need the extra portability or you have your own display, is when you configure it the same as a 14 inch MacBook Pro with the same internal specs, you save about a thousand dollars. So you can put that towards another display, or in my case, the studio display. And it's definitely a balance of bigger versus technically better because the XDR display on the MacBook Pro is one of the best in the world right now. Now, if you don't need HDR, whether you're creating or watching, the studio display is a really, really good option. And the 600 nits does feel very bright. 
You kind of have to look at the studio display as a package because you get a built-in webcam that isn't the greatest, but super convenient. I'm someone who didn't think I would ever like to take video calls standing, but I actually really love it. And you also get the added benefit of center stage on here. You also get a built-in mic and speakers. And the mic especially surpassed my expectations for a mic that's built into a screen. And the speakers kind of go hand in hand with that because if you're someone who doesn't need to edit audio and you're just using them casually, they are more than great for that. Now in my case with editing YouTube videos and occasional music things with Gabby, I wanted to step up the speaker game a little here. So these are the Dynaudio LYD5s and they're a good step above beginner audio monitors, but they won't completely break the bank. These are powered two-way speakers, so you don't need an amp or anything and they sound as incredible as they look. What I really like about these is the flexibility that you get with them. There's a low-end extension that outputs way more bass than you would expect with a five-inch speaker. Now beyond the bass controls, there's also profile settings that you can adjust to ensure that the speakers sound the best in your specific space, whether that's freestanding or up against a wall. Now depending on your use case, your preference, and your room, you can also swap these between neutral, which is gonna give you the flattest profile, bright, which is gonna enhance things, and dark, which is gonna take a little of that top end off. As far as what the speakers are sitting on, these are the Gator Framework speaker risers, which not only brings them to ear level, but it frees up a ton of space on the desk, which was super important for this setup. These are about a hundred bucks for a pair, so not too bad. They're also padded, so you're not gonna wreck your speakers or your desk. And my favorite part about them is how easy the setup is because it just clamps onto your desk, there's two screws, and the whole setup takes about 10 minutes or less. Now tying the whole audio setup together for the interface, I didn't need anything too extravagant, mainly just compact and bus powered. So I went with the UA Volt 1. It connects to USB-C, so it's a great option for a MacBook as well. And it has a combo jack in the front, so it supports XLR or quarter inch. So I can plug in my mic for voiceovers or for Gabby, or even plug in my bass direct. This also has a headphone jack on the front, which is much easier access as opposed to the headphone jack on the back of the Mac Studio. And it supports up to 24192, which is great if you take advantage of lossless on Apple Music. So I just added another addition to the right side of the desk here. I have a nice little headphone desk clamp that holds my AirPods Max. It swivels out, swivels back in, depending on how I want it. It was pretty cheap, only 15 bucks on Amazon goes with the desk perfectly. It attaches with some like 3M-like adhesive on the top here. So it's very easy to install on. And yeah, I love it because I get easy access to my AirPods Max when I'm working at my desk. Some additional accessories I have here is a standard Apple keyboard and trackpad in space gray. They're from my old setup. I think down the line, I'll switch it to the silver one and the Touch ID keyboard. But I also have my trackpad here. I always prefer it over mouse because I'm just so used to trackpad life with my MacBook and I just feel like I'm a lot faster on a trackpad. I also added some natural plants to tie in the whole look of the setup. I've been all about real plants as opposed to a fake plant life. And there's also a little file cabinet on the side that matches a desk really well. And of course, a candle. So right here, I have my new snake plant. And I'm really new to owning real plants myself. I'm not the best at keeping them, so I'm gonna try my hardest with these new plants. But yeah, this is a nice and taller one. I have it with a stand from Target. Has a great pop of color here with a light in the back. I've had that light forever. Where's this? Probably also an Amazon special that I've had since one of my TV setups. But yeah, pops of color there. And on the other side, on the right side of the desk, I have this little, I don't know what type of plant this is. If you guys know in the comments, let me know. It's just a cool looking plant. It has cool leaves. Again, another pop of color. I wanted to balance it out with something smaller in here. I think I'm gonna add one more little one right there. But yeah, I am loving the real natural plant life. I think I'm over fake plants and just real plants now. It looks so good in here. So that is the complete setup for now at least. I think it'll definitely keep evolving like it has throughout the span of this video, but even more so after I decide whether to stick with Mac Studio Life or maybe make it more of a MacBook Pro setup. But for now, that is it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I will also link everything that I have in the description box. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hasta luego.